Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Larry. Welcome to Manipod, a podcast dedicated to men over 50. Brought to you by Manipods.com. Okay, Larry, we have a very special guest today on the show. Okay. And I'm going to sing you a few words from what I think is a very famous song, and you see if you can guess who the artists are, okay? Okay. Ready? Yeah, I guess. And then I saw her face. Now I'm a believer. Got it? Uh, well, uh, that was originally, not originally, but that was from Shrek, as I recall. But that was actually the monkeys. You are correct. Ding, ding, ding. You Whoa. got it. And guess who our guest star is? A monkey? Yeah, Mickey Dolenz. Whoa. And, and our friend, Jennifer Convey, uh, met up with Mickey Dolenz and has a great podcast, a Manipod podcast just for manipods.com. So Sweet. stay tuned. And this is awesome because Mickey is so cool. Can't wait. Hi, everyone. We're here at manipods.com. I'm Jennifer Convey. I'm your host today. And I am so excited to introduce someone we all know. Oh, my gosh. He's an actor, singer, songwriter, producer, director. TV, film stage, and a radio personality, and so much more. But of course, we all knew him first and still as the vocalist and drummer on the amazing uh, rock pop band, The Monkees. Mickey Dolenz, everybody. Here we come, walk down the street. We get funny as from everyone we meet. What an introduction. I, uh, that, you, I did all that. <laughs> you, <laughs> yes, you, I did. you do, and more, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah true. Uh, well, why don't I have any money? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't believe no, it. No, that's great. Great to, uh, great to uh, see you, even if it, uh, albeit virtually. Um, I know. It's great to see you. My gosh. Um, yeah. I'll take it. This is Been the next while, thing. So. Yeah, been a while. So, oh my gosh. Okay, so you you do so much. The, what don't you do? And I know you've been touring and working nonstop since the days of the monkeys, right? And well, you, even before that, uh, even before that, Jennifer. I mean, I my first TV series. I was ten, uh, and I toured uh, uh, a little bit with that and uh, publicity uh, tours mainly. Wow. And before that. I was doing screen tests uh, when I, my first screen test, I was six. And um, I actually have some prenatal work coming out on ultrasound. <laughs> Pictures and yeah. 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 Little, 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 little. <laughs> black and white. It's black and white. Black but, you know, so. Well, of course. <laughs> That's hysterical. Yeah, yeah, yeah you I'm were the me. What? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I know you were the lead, the title lead in Circus Boy. You had a series. You were like a baby. Ah, I see you're practicing to be a musician, huh? Uh-uh, drummer boy. Oh, oh but what's the occasion? I'm going to go in the Army. Oh, <laughs> you don't think you're a little small to be in the Army? Pete says in the Army, drummer boys can be small. Oh, I'm going to miss you. <laughs> we'll all miss you. Well, don't worry. I'll be back soon. Pete and Teddy are going to get this war over in a jiffy. And then you worked nonstop in TV as a kid. I know. You were a child star already. So let me ask you this. Did you just get the acting bug while you were in the womb? How early? How did that happen? I never got the acting bug. And I still have never <laughs> had the acting bug or singing bug. I was That's born into a showbiz. I was born into a showbiz family. I essentially, I followed in my father's footsteps. 
My mom and dad were both singers, actors. They met doing a play in Hollywood here. Um, so and so I grew up in a family that was constantly revolving around the uh, around show business. Um, and But not in that typical kind of cliched, uh, you know, I, uh, stage mom kind of eyes and teeth, honey, eyes and teeth. <laughs> um, it, never like that. It was, it, we lived out in the valley on ranches and had horses. My father was uh, uh, Italian, off the boat Italian, so I'm first generation Italian. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, well, I'm an Italian, Irish, and American Indian, so don't get me drunk, pissed off, and armed. Uh, no, could you not write it down? No, so, so I grew up, I thought everybody's father was an actor. My dad was quite successful as, a, as an actor. And when we had, like, at school, I remember as a little kid, they would say, what did your father do? I'd say he mows the lawn <laughs> because they're in between films, you know. Um, so I grew up in, in that environment, and so I never made the choice. But like I say, I was never pushed into it. I was never... I don't ever remember being, you know, I never took lessons or dancing or singing or acting or, or anything. It was just the family business. That's so really I never made the choice that, that you're, you're talking about. I never made that. Oh, God, I want to be a star. <laughs> um, <laughs> and look what happened. I, I just, I just, I just uh, I, you know, followed in my father's footsteps. The only time I ever made a, a conscious kind of life career decision after circus boy uh, I was 10 11 and 12 I went back to school uh, here in the valley and I just led a very normal life my parents took me out of the business very wisely hmm. and I just was a kid you know uh, hanging out and uh, I went to school went to high school my interests uh, lie in things like uh, building and electronics and, and, and uh, uh, DIY, you know, my dad was very handy with tools and stuff. So I was really keen on electronics and, uh, and stuff like that. I would always take shop. Those were my favorite classes was wood shop or metal shop or uh, That's whatever. amazing. And <clears throat> after high school, my father passed away a year or so later. And I was a bit of a loose end. I was doing little guest shots on TV shows just to make money. Uh, you know, just, to, you know, I'd still get offered a little bit part on, a, on some TV show. And um, my friend of mine, who also was into building stuff and, and kind of handy, and he suggested, um, why don't we get our drafting, architectural drafting licenses and and start a building company, uh, you know, uh, like, you know, just start remodeling and then building home stuff. Wow. And I thought, God, that's a great idea. So I went to college and it uh, called uh, LA trade tech, Los Angeles trade technical college. I just got an honorary degree from them. And I started in about 1960. I want to say like 64 would have been my first semester. And I, stu I was studying to be an architect. And my plan was is that I was going to be an architect. And if I couldn't make it as an architect, I could fall back on showbiz. That was, really, that <laughs> was, that was my plan. And I was in, in school, in, in college, uh, studying. When, uh, and like I said, I was doing these little bit parts. But right. pilot season would come around. Remember that. And pilot season came around. And I would go up for pilots, you know. That year, 65 by now, uh, I was doing, you know, going up for pilots because I wasn't stupid. I knew the value and the power of a, of a television series. And, um, but I was really held bent on becoming an architect. Nice and I went to, uh, there was actually three or four uh, music, pop music shows in 65, pilots. Sorry, pilots of, of pop music shows because obviously it was in the air and, and people were trying to capitalize on uh, capitalize on it, the producers and the and the network and everybody. So there was three or four up, uh, shows that year of different ilks, and one of them was the Monkees. And so 
I went up, obviously. I got the pilot for the monkeys. I auditioned for it. It was a long audition process, very uh, involved, much more than a, a normal uh, TV show. Uh, you had to be able to uh, act, obviously, do comedy, and you had to be able to sing, and you had to be able to play an instrument. My uh, instrument at the time was guitar, and my audition piece was Johnny Be Good, Chuck Berry. And um, anyway, I got the pilot, obviously, but I didn't even quit school because I knew how, how seldom pilots are sold. You know, one out of 20, if that, probably. So I didn't even quit school. I went back to school until they... Till they got the uh, the order. Till they, the, yeah. the, the um, um, they they got they went to New York and they the show got picked up for twenty six episodes and then I then I quit school. Then you quit school and wait a minute. So so this is unusual because the, the band was created for the TV show. Not it the wasn't other a band, right? It wasn't a band, Jennifer. It was a cast of the TV show, like right. Glee. Glee was not a Glee club. It was right. uh, a cast of entertainers who were uh, cast in a television show about a glee club. So the Monkees was not a band. It was not a group. It was a television show about a group. Like but you glee became, was a you became well, that, a group. <clears throat> that, that's arguable. Um, really? You know, did glee ever become a glee club? Because they did go on the road. So would you call them a manufactured glee club? I don't know, no. probably not. Um, the Monkees was, was a television show about this imaginary group that lived in this beach house in Malibu, which does beg the question, which was a set, of course, which yeah. does beg the question of how we could afford a Malibu beach house when we never got any work. <laughs> right. so the show was about us trying to get work. The show was about this, this band, this imaginary band, uh, that wanted to be the Beatles. Right. But we never made it. We never made it on the TV show, which is an interesting, right. you know, uh, point. And I right. think it was, and it was intentional. It was the struggle for. And you guys were success. so funny. It was always the struggle. And I watched it. I watched every single one of them. I've seen them a million times. I was a huge fan. I never missed it. But it, it was a sitcom. It was, you guys, you. Yeah. Hilarious, hilarious. I just watched some of the videos, uh, you know, of your songs. What is it, Randy Scousket? Randy, Randy Scousket. Yeah, you wrote that song. Great uh, song. Yeah, yeah it was uh, about the only one I did. Um, I was not, I'm still not a very prolific uh, songwriter. Um, but yeah, I, I did write. In fact, it was the only song that any one of us wrote that ever was a big hit. It was went to number... It, it went to number one in England uh, and one of the charts, and, and then awesome. it, got, uh, it, it went to number one in England, and then it got kicked out of number one by this stinking group called the Beatles. Oh, them? Yeah. Whatever them. happened to them? Poor. They were really good, you know. Yeah, I wonder. I boy, you never know, do you? Themselves. Yeah, you never know. But, um, yeah, no, so that was a great song, though, and you and all you guys are goofing in the video. I mean, it just, there was nobody like you guys. There wasn't the humor, and you guys sang great, and the songs were great, the performances were great. I mean, I loved it. Okay, so what's that title mean, Randy's Ghost Skit? What? What is that title? How'd you come up with oh, that? Oh, oh. <laughs> for the song um, and the title. I went on the first big monkey tour, and um, staying at the... Uh, uh, at, a, at the Grosvenor House or somewhere in London, and the Beatles had thrown us a big party, and I'm told I had a great time, and I went back to the hotel, and I was, uh, and I hadn't been asleep, so it's like eight, six, eight o'clock in the morning or something. I'm still up uh, from the party, and had a guitar, and I'm, I'm noodling uh, and singing, it, basically stream of consciousness kind of stuff about my experiences there in England. For instance, one line in the in the song is the four kings of EMI are sitting gracefully on the floor, and and that was a, a, a Beatle album sitting on the floor that we took our, all our albums around with us. Mm. Uh, it was probably Sergeant the Sergeant Pepper, I would guess, and mm. <clears throat> um, so it was about all the people that I that I had met and 
and the atmosphere and all about London in the 60s. And there was a show on television called Till Death Us, Us Do Part, I found out, which became All in the Family over here. But that was the original version in England. And the father figure calls the son a Randy Scouse git. And I had no idea what it meant, but I just thought it sounded hilarious. And <laughs> so, <laughs> it so does. typically very 60s, you know, kind of a, a thing. Well, man, that is so cool. I'm going to call my song Randy Scouse Git. <laughs> I did. And I, uh, we went back to the States and we recorded it. And we put it on the album headquarters. And um, I got a call from the publisher uh, eventually and the record company. And they said, the uh, record company in England wants to release that as a single. And I was like, cool. And, but they said, you need an alternate title. I said, why? They said, well, because the title that you chose, Randy Scott Skit, is, is rude. It's dirty. I, I said, what? I said, I saw it on a BBC television show in the middle of the day or something. They said, no, 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 you, you can't call it that because your fans are very young and blah, blah, blah. I said, okay. They, they said, you need an alternate title. So in England, it was released and became a big hit under the title, Alternate Title. She won't come and lose my mind It's too easy humming songs To a girl in yellow dress It's been a long time since the party And the room is in a mess The four kings of EMI Are sitting stately on the floor There are birds out on the sidewalk And a ballet at the door He reminds me of a penguin With few and plaster hairs Talcum powder on the letter And the birthday But then years later, I asked somebody, I don't remember how I found out, I asked somebody for a translation, and they said it, it translates roughly as a horny Liverpudlian putz. Oh my, that is bad. <laughs> that's very bad. That's, that's very bad. <laughs> I love it, though. <laughs> I love it that you didn't know, and you named it that. That's hysterical. <laughs> So fun. So fun. So of that era, I mean, what an incredible time. What an incredible time in the 60s. And I know that more recently you just did um, the Laurel Canyon docuseries, the two-parter, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. I was one of the best. I've done a few of them. There's been a, a kind of a, a plethora of them over the last few years. Uh, but that I was a really, really it. good one. I haven't seen it, so I'm dying to know firsthand if you got to talk about what what was what's your best memories of that time? It was such a unique. I don't know if it'll ever be duplicated, but all the talent and and people, this community in a small little canyon area, um, the talent that was there. What are your best? What's your favorite memory or story from that time? I'm told I had a great time. <laughs> And you probably no, there's, did. There's some truth. There's some truth there, and it's not for the the obvious uh, cliched reason necessarily. Um, uh, you know, it, there was a lot going on, uh, certainly in my life um, at the time, with the monkeys and all that. And you know, I, I do remember little bits and pieces. Um, not so much about the performing and the sh and, and the, the acting and the work and stuff, but just kind of. Mm -hmm hanging out, you know, it was a right. very, very small community. I mean, I don't think people realize that, well, the whole 60s, you know, hippie pop culture thing was actually a very, very small uh, community. Right. You know, right. you say, you hear that 250,000 people showed up at Woodstock. Well, that was just about everybody. <laughs> 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 I, and, um, in the country, <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> it was little pockets. There was little pockets, but it wasn't right. a huge right. 
a, a, a number of people because it was it was still considered, you know, really counterculture. And right. the monkeys, believe it or not, almost didn't get on the air because the producers, uh, or rather the networks and the um, and the uh, sponsors, they were very worried about putting long-haired young uh, guys, young boys, uh, with bell bottoms and long hair and paisley and uh, putting them on network primetime television because usually the only time you saw young people in you know uh, long hair and paisley bell bottoms they were being arrested and so uh, wow. there was and i remember the producers wow. telling us at the time that it was the networks were felt they were taking a big chance <laughs> The Laurel Canyon scene, like I say, was very, very small. It was like a one right. square mile or like that, and um, but and very rural, very uh, uh, you know, uh, residential, more than residential, very rural, and you just wandered around. Nobody locked their doors. You just, well, I would wander down the street but where I lived, literally, like you know, down the hill and walk in and just walk into this little house on on the lookout mountain uh, where Graham Nash and, and Joni Mitchell were living. Yes. And that was the house they wrote about. Uh, he wrote about the cat in the house and all that. Well, that yes. was just out at the end of my street. And Mark and Howie, the turtles, were up, up here. And uh, Henry Diltz over here. And uh, uh, Alice Cooper, you know, bought a house next to me up on the hill. What is it? But you, but you, yeah, you, it, it was a lot like the village, I'm sure was, and still is. And I think Laurel Canyon probably is still like that, a different crew, a different group of people. Right, but, but not it, that kind of community of, the, of music. Well, the difference, that was was that, the difference was the time, the right. era. This right. was like Hollywood maybe in the 20s with, with the movie industry. Right. There would have been that same kind of sense of, you know, uh, sure. since, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, zeitgeist. Right. There was definitely, yeah, there was definitely a zeitgeist. So since um, we're but talking, it wasn't, go ahead. No, no, I, 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 I love all this. This is uh, what, a, what a charmed, amazing life, you know, you have been traversing through and the stories you must have, what you remember, um, cause you were having <laughs> such a good time. <laughs> But you know, speaking no, I've, of I've been blessed, Jennifer. I, I really do. I feel I feel blessed. Um, you know, for a lot of reasons. Um, and being cast in the monkeys, of course, you know, a huge uh, difference in my life. Right. And um, but I I do. I feel blessed to have been part of that time. But I also feel pretty good about what's going on now in my life with, uh, with family it. and Let's grandkids now. And Aww. yeah, I've got grandkids and. And I'm working on some uh, some great new stuff. You know, this whole COVID pandemic thing obviously has been <laughs> interesting. So what um, happened to you? What did everything just, you were on tour, right? You've been working and touring and did everything just stop for you like everyone else? How's that been yeah. for you? How's it been for well, you? Well, I, I, to, be, to be honest, you know, I, I hate to use the word enjoy, but because uh, of all the tragedy and all the people suffering, mm -hmm. of course, but I've really enjoyed the time off. I, this is the first time in, I think, decades that I unpacked my suitcase and left it in the garage. I have, you know, I have, I've been on the road for so, so long, and uh, to, to be able to 
I've heard other people talk about this, you know, kind of a yeah. reboot, you know, people are talking about it and you kind of like thinking about what is important in your life and, and, and what isn't. And mm -hmm. I don't like traveling. And unfortunately, 90% of what I was doing is traveling. traveling, but yeah, well, I, I love the got shows. You for, you, I'm so sorry. I, 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 there's a, I, I, I was just going to say, I love the shows. I love doing the shows. But they don't pay us to do the shows. What we say in the business is they pay us to travel. We sing for free. <laughs> and there's a yeah. lot of truth in that. Uh, and yeah. so I, I, and I miss doing the shows with, with Nesmith now. And but we have an album out. And we, um, we are planning, uh, hopefully, on getting back together in the spring, depending on a lot of, Fantastic. you know, uh, Fantastic. Uh, hello? Hello, I can't think of our kidnappers. Uh, hello, this is Mr. Nesmith. Say, are the kidnappers in? No, I'm sorry. The kidnappers are out right now. This is their answering service. Yeah, well, look, who's supposed to be kidnapped today? Oh, yes, Mr. Nesmith. The two o'clock kidnapping. I have it right here in the schedule. Oh, I'm sorry. The kidnappers are very behind schedule. You see, this is our busy season, just before the holidays. Oh, well, then maybe we ought to wait till after the holidays. No, I'm afraid that won't do. You see, after the holidays, they're very busy with exchanges. Oh. Okay. Well, I'd be remiss if we, since we're talking about times and other times, this is menopause.com, and gosh knows us, us girls, uh, I can attest to, um, you know, what's the secret of longevity and do we change? Absolutely. So, menopause, you personally, do you, you're the renaissance man. You're just going to end the energy. Energizer Bunny, you're just going to keep going and going and going and going, and nobody's worried about what you're going to do um, later. Uh, but did you sense a change? Do you think that's real? Menopause is real. Was it real for you? Was there something? What's the funniest change you noticed, perhaps, if you had any, after 50? Well, I don't know if I'm, uh, I'm a renaissance man. Uh, I'm probably just a dilettante. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I, um, I, I, I didn't, uh, I don't remember noticing any uh, major, uh, certainly not any physiological change except uh, gaining weight and losing hair, <laughs> I suppose. Okay. Um, you know, yeah, the, uh, I, I, yeah I, I don't remember, you know, I, I, I probably went through some sort of a midlife life crisis, but you know, I, I, I acknowledge that I am kind of a special case because of my situation. Yes. I mean, you know, I, I'm still, you know, that, you, you know, well, look at Mick, look at Mick Jagger, you know, <laughs> he's like, you know, yeah. he's still rocking and rolling at, yeah. you know, older than I am and I'm still rocking and rolling. So that does put a Rock. different sort of a, a twist on, that's a secret. A, a That's a secret to longevity is just what? What would you tell others who obviously can't be you? But what do you think the secret is for longevity? Well, that, that, I, don't think, I don't think it's a secret. I think it's probably uh, a combination of a number of, of disciplines and luck and uh, a bit. And, and, but I think mostly probably just attitude, just uh, mm -hmm. keep, you know, your youth and and being young and, and spirited uh, is all about attitude, much more than it is about um, your physicality. I mean, it helps to, to, to be healthy, of course. And yeah. that probably right up there at the top is taking care of yourself. Like the old joke, if I knew I was going to live this long, I would have taken better care of myself. Um, and right. There's a lot of truth there, but I have, I have tried to take care of myself, you know, as much as, I can't you look the same. The, You're amazing. Being, You're amazing. Well, there's a, there's a, a, a portrait of, uh, of myself in the attic getting older. Um, <laughs> um, but I have take, tried to take care of myself. But it's also an attitude. I've been blessed, as I say, to be in a business and to be successful and to still get out there and rock and roll on stage. Um, I have to be careful. I've got to take, take better care of myself. Uh, as the, as the years go on, but I think it's mostly just attitude. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, accept the things always, you can't change. But right. I, I, one thing I always notice about you is that you're always so upbeat. Your sense of humor, 
you know, you're very engaging, you're engaged in your life, your family, you love what you do clearly. I mean, you know, it exudes from you when you perform and just every day in life that I've ever had the pleasure to cross well, paths. I would, I would say my only mantra, and this probably did come to me, uh, uh, you know, in, uh, when I hit the 50s and, and stuff like that, uh, the menopause, as you call it, um, uh, but so my mantra basically is, you know, uh, accept the things you you can't I can't change, change the things I can, and know the friggin' difference. <laughs> <laughs> That's so my uh, sort of uh, bastardization of the serenity pa- uh, prayer. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I, it's so I I love I love hearing all the things that you have done and are doing. But I swear I just read this. Rolling Stone just announced you have a new album coming out. Dolan yeah. St. Nesmith. Yeah. Okay, let's, yeah. Let's oh yeah. Thank you for thank brand you for new mentioning. Yeah. News. Yeah, it's brand ah. new news. Uh, uh, we just made the deal uh, a few weeks ago, um, uh, but we're working on it already. Well, I, it's an idea that I came up with uh, actually a few years ago, and ran it past Nesmith. He thought it was obviously thought it was a great idea. He's such a really incredible songwriter, um, and uh, he wrote so many great songs, not just for the monkeys, you know. Uh, he he tells this great story uh, that we do on stage that he went, when he was cast in the show, he was cast as a singer-songwriter, and they told him that, you know, you're going to be able to sing uh, your songs and uh, write and sing your songs. Right. And he tells the story of going into the producers one day, with a new song he'd written and he played it and they said, well, that's nice, but it's not a monkey song. And he said, but wait a minute, I am one of the monkeys. And <laughs> they said, uh, yeah, but you know, that's not a monkey song because they had in mind their own, you know, their, their own genre of stuff they wanted to do. And uh, so he said, okay. And he gave it to this young girl singer who was kicking around town at the time, uh, wasn't well known yet. And she recorded it. Her name was Linda Ronstadt, and that was Different Drum. Wrote some great songs for the monkeys, but for for others too. Um, Wow. And uh, over the years, we've done so much of his material, uh, especially on stage. Even when he wasn't playing with us, David and Peter and I would always do at least three or four or five Nesmith tunes because they just were such great tunes and really worked so well on stage. And so when we got back together a number of years ago, a few years ago, um, I I said, you know, I've had this idea of doing, actually, originally I wanted to call it Dolan's Does Nesmith, but I thought maybe, yeah, so nobody went for that title. Uh, So it's it's Dolan's Nesmith. Different different show. (laughs) Yeah, so Dolan sings Nesmith, and uh, I'm going to be doing a bunch of uh, bunch of his tunes. That's so exciting. Okay, so when I know you're working on it now, when can we all hear it? When what's the deadline, or well, when well, is it going to be? These days, of course, you never know. I mean, it's such, the business is is so mm-hmm. different. I don't know what you, now. You don't even well, you not, don't even call them albums, but I do. I do I've too. decided screw it, I'm not going to, you know, I'm calling it an album. Uh, and yeah, yeah. Uh, it'll be, you know, weeks or, or, or a few months, I'm sure, because we oh, just that's started. Quick. That's so, great. Um, and, and we'll see, I guess you call it now when, when we're going to drop it. When you, oh, right, drop it, because they don't have a noun for what it is if you don't use the word album. <laughs> yeah, right. Songs, group of songs, I don't know what you're supposed to call it. <laughs> Um, yeah. Digital but, dump. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mickey, I mean, I, this is so, it's such a treat. Um, I, you're an inspiration. Gosh, you're so busy. So you're going to have this new album coming out. You're going to be back on tour, maybe in the spring 2021, only if it's safe to do so. We'll see you again. And we can just check on your website and check out your tour dates and schedule and all that good stuff. Yep. Right. And, and the, big, um, the big news is the big news. I just started building some new pool furniture in my workshop. That's awesome. That's right. You know, so I ran into you at this furniture show and you said you were speaking. And I'm like, Mickey, what are you doing here? Speaking? Wait, what? Yeah. 
and you're a craftsman on top of all the other things you do. Hey, is there something that you haven't done on your bucket list that you would like to do? Just anything that you haven't already done? Uh, boy, good question. Uh, uh, nothing, nothing springs to mind. There's some things I'd like to continue doing. Okay. Um, uh, You're doing like, it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I love going out into the wilderness and, and doing dispersed camping and, and wilderness tracking and stuff like that. Um, I want to do a bit more of that. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, there's a few things, you know, in the, in the back of my mind, but, um, okay. okay. Especially, you we'll know, stay tuned you know, and we'll check up and, and see what you're up to. I know it'll always be a lot of things and, um, uh, be safe in the meantime. And you and stay nice well. Talking to you. Thank you so much, Mickey. It's great to see you and talk to you too. Great, Jennifer. Thank you so much. Bye.